Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of Slightly Warped. I'm Rick, joined again with Big Show. Show, how you doing, man? Uh, I'm good, how are you? Uh, not too bad. Um, I'm just trying to wrap my head around the fact that it's Tuesday. For everybody that knows, yeah, this comes out on Thursdays, but we record on Tuesdays. But it feels like this should already be Thursday. This has been a long week already. It has. I will agree with you. It's been rough. Yeah, I mean, my weekend. What doesn't bad. kill us makes us stronger. Well, I'm going to be damn strong after this Because <laughs> it's too, killing brother. me. <laughs> me too, brother. Me too. So check it out. Uh, do you have Hulu? I do. Have you watched Prey? I haven't. All right. Check it out. Watch Prey. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'll put a link up at the top because uh, I did a review on that on my other channel. Uh, the missus and I, we sat down and we watched it. Um, what was it Saturday night? I believe it was Saturday night. And um, I was impressed. I was. Um, after those last couple of Predator movies, I thought, oh, this is going to be cookie cutter BS and, you know, all this and all that. But they kept everything basic they stuck to the story that they were trying to tell they didn't go too far to the left or right um it was very entertaining it was very thrilling uh the scares were you know really good not for shock value but it put her in dangerous situations that were realistic and she got out of them in realistic ways um I was genuinely pleased with the story and I'm glad I got a chance to watch it. And this is one of those, those movies that I didn't think would be about anything simply because it's a streaming movie and we have to get out of that stigma, especially me, that just because it's on a streaming channel doesn't mean that it's going to be a lower tiered movie. Yes, most definitely. And, and do you have Apple TV by chance streaming service? I do not. I do not. There's, they have movies that come out just on that, and one of them was a Tom Hanks movie called Greyhound, where hmm. he was a World War II uh, submarine captain, and he was fighting the Wolf Pack, which was basically this rogue pack of Russian submarine or German submarines, and he was trying. He his job was to protect this convoy going overseas, and these submarines were picking off the ships one by one. It's a really good movie, but it's on the streaming service. So, yeah, I get it. This Prey thing, give me a quick 30-second premise of what it's about. Um, if you're familiar with the Predator movies, this is a prequel, and it takes place in the 1700s. So this okay. is several hundred years before Arnold. Um, Caveman type stuff. No, no, no. 17-something, late 1700s, uh, you know, just pre civil war and all that and first of all the cast is mostly native american because the uh members of the cast the main cast are uh i believe they're cherokee were they cherokee babe comanche whatever comanche started with a c and ended yeah. with an e so gotcha started with a c ended with an e got it <laughs> anyway comanche and um one of the things that I like uh, derailing for a minute was they actually used Native American cast members to play Native American parts. Excellent. Um, so commend them on that. Anyway, this is the Predator getting dropped off. Uh, you see the ship drop him off at the beginning so he can start his hunt. And, you know, he starts off with, uh, I believe it was either a wolf or a coyote. And he took care of that real quick. Later on, he takes care of a, a grizzly bear, and then he's on to the big prey, people, and he takes out most of their tribe, uh, the males in the tribe, except for uh, the lead, which is a female, another thing that I like about the movie, and it's not so much cat and mouse, but it's a buildup to them having a showdown, and uh, 
backing up real quick because I said mostly Native American. There are some other people in the cast because there are some uh, fur traders and trackers from, uh, I want to say they were French Canadian because this takes place uh, in, in northern United States, so near Canada. And um, he takes out all of them too before the showdown with a uh, girl. And basically, she uses her intelligence to get out of situations and to get him into the trap that she needs him into. And she uses his weaponry against him. So it, it's, it's really nice because on a psychological level, you can see she's clearly physically outmatched. Right. But because she uses her mind, She's able to get around or have things happen that normally would, wouldn't help in uh, any other situation. You know, I don't want to give too much of it away, but uh, Brains Over Brawn, and it's a slow build for them, but it's a good movie. Okay. I'll check it out. All right. Uh, while we're on the subject of movies, I would ask if you've seen the new Batgirl movie. But I already know that's not going to happen because A, it's Batgirl. B, that movie has been tossed in the proverbial trash can. It will never see the light of the day. Have you heard about that? I have because they canceled the series and everything. Yeah, but here's my thing. Warner uh, Brothers uh, is canceling all their DC series. Yeah, yeah. Um I guess they have new management now again. And this new guy, the new head guy, he's got what he says is a 10 year plan from now through, I guess it'll be uh, 2033. He's going to get them up to par to where Marvel is now, instead of trying to hit the home run in year one, like most of the, uh, his predecessors did and fail miserably. He is going to build. Now, I haven't heard too much on his plan as far as how he's going to build and if he will use existing uh, cast members that they have now instead of trying to hit the reset button. I would really like them to use who they have now. We've got a good Wonder Woman. We've got a great Aquaman. And we need another Superman movie because I think that up until this point, DC and Warner Brothers have done Henry Cavill dirty. So we, we really need to get another Superman movie. And if his plan is anything like that, and he did shout out Marvel saying, hey, he gave them their props. They did it right. We need to do that. It's going to hurt at first, but that's how you build. But Marvel's switching it up now because they're doing their stuff on the Disney Plus channel, you know, yeah. making series, you know, six hour movies instead of. But you, you know, know what? Two Marvel and a half can hour. do that now because they've built their world. They didn't just throw it out there and say, here it is. It was a slow build starting in 2008 with Robert but Downey Jr. With Iron. all this stuff, I'm just going to use Arrow, the Arrowverse, mm -hmm. Flash, Batgirl. That you have the exact same existing universe already set. You don't have to reset. I wouldn't reset. I mean, there's no need. Um, use what you got. Change your storylines if you have to and let it build. You can't meet somebody on day one and then on day three say, let's form the Justice League. It, it no. doesn't work like that. But they didn't do that with the movies. They didn't do it. It took three movies to do the Justice League and they never really did it. But here's the thing. They, they did three movies, Man of Steel, Batman versus Superman, then Justice League. So right, but they never... didn't really do Justice League. They didn't really call it that. We yes. knew what it was as fans. The heroes didn't know what it was until the yeah, very but, end uh, when you see them going back to the old Wayne Manor and, yeah, you know, this is, I'm going to build this. Here's this giant table. You see the table there. And, you know, for us geeks, we're like, ah, you know. I, I, I wish that we'd got solo movies from the other heroes first. It, it, it would just be better for the payoff. You'd be more invested in them. Now, I will say this. The Zack Snyder cut helped out a lot, especially with yeah. Cyborg. I completely disregard the first one. I'm only looking yeah. at Zack Snyder's because 
Zack Snyder's cut was phenomenal, in my opinion. I really it enjoyed it. I would put it up there with a lot of the Marvel hits that are out there. I agree. Um, but Marvel didn't always do a singular movie before they no. created the team. I mean, Spider-Man wasn't introduced as a singular until after Civil War. True. You know, Black Panther wasn't, it, you know, was introduced in Civil War. You know, those types of things. I don't know. I would like to see DC give Marvel a run for its money because they have some cool characters that aren't out there. Like, I want to see a Green Lantern core, but actually done right, not the Ryan Reynolds version. Ryan Reynolds doesn't even like the Ryan Reynolds version. So I know. He what does that tell you? himself in Deadpool. Exactly. Um, but, no, I want to see Sinestro turning bad, you know? Let's see another Superman movie, though. I really think we need another sequel to Man of Steel. Uh, he has Henry gotten... Cavill's not coming back. You don't think so? No. Mm. Why not? They should do Earth 2 Superman where he's a black dude. I heard talk of that, and they were going to cast Michael B. Jordan. Perfect guy. Perfect but guy. I have no idea if they would go through with it. I think they're afraid of a lot of fan backlash. Nah. Black Panther was such a good movie. Yeah. It has a has a cult following. It would be it. I, you know if they're no turning their, if they're turning our superheroes gay, hello, they can make Superman black man. Yeah, uh, that's a bad move too. Uh, uh, wrapping it up on the Batgirl thing though, the reason why it will never see light of day is because, and I never knew that a movie studio could do this until I heard about it. Because it's insured, they can write it off as a loss and still collect a profit off of it. Ain't that a blue? However, here's the catch. Again, it can never see the light of day. If it does, for any kind of profit, they will be in breach of their insurance contract and there will be a heavy, heavy penalty. Any version of it? I mean... Of the character? Um, it's not a version of the character. They can't show any version of that movie uh, for, for profit. That they started to make. Yeah. Right? But right. they can make a complete new movie. They can do with that. With the same character and the same actress if they wanted they, to. They can do that. Gotcha. But if uh, they collect $70 million off the insurance on this and then put it on HBO Max... <laughs> yeah some people are gonna have to answer i All think right. if i make 70 million dollars off your insurance I, the movie's gonna stay in the trash i'm just saying oh i i'd tear up every negative there is take my check to the bank i'm good and the investors get their piece that everybody's good and the exactly. actors have already got paid so they're good so it's all um, are you a video just, gamer at all i used to be Oh man, um, teen years ago, but uh, yeah, have you ever played like the Injustice and the Injustice Two games? Yes, those were among the last ones that I actually owned. I would love to see them make a a, a movie, but in that cinema type, you know, where they do the movie lines with those characters. You know what I'm talking about? That would be good. That have to be a live action. It's not cartoon. It's not Pixar. It's that digital. I think that'd be phenomenal. Well, you know, you can you can string together the um, little outtakes, and they actually form the Injustice movie. Oh yeah, M most definitely they do. I just I would love to. You could create so much stuff without having to pay actors just their voice. You know what I mean? And you don't have to worry about all that other crap. I mean, it'd be that'd be a moneymaker. And you can't say animation is dead because, uh, again, going back to Marvel, into the Spider Verse cleaned up they getting ready to come out with part two and three and the what if series yes uh as a matter of fact i want to say next week i am group comes out yep and so does well the 18th she hulk yeah i'll i'll be waiting on that trust and believe ricky will have a full review on that that'd be on one <laughs> of our podcasts we'll have to talk about it 
Oh, we will. We will. Uh, moving on to sports, though. This is the laugher. These are the NFL power rankings. Now, I'm just going to break it down uh, into groups of 10. The first 10, the middle 10, and then the back 10. And if any of them stick out to you like a red flag, this is totally wrong, let me know. Number one, they've got the Buffalo Bills. Number two, they've got the Los Angeles Rams. That's wrong. Number three, the Buccaneers. That's wrong. Four, the 49ers. That's wrong. Five, the Bengals. Six, the Packers. That's wrong. Finally, at seven, they got the Chiefs. That's wrong. Eight, the Broncos. Hell no. Nine, the Chargers. No. And ten, the Ravens. I got all kind of problems with this list. Only two – well – I got I I don't have a problem with Buffalo being in the top ten, just not number one. Yeah, I mean, there's not even any reason to go through eleven through thirty-two. These ten are what I want to concentrate on. And the Rams, it's, it's obviously, all wrong. the Rams should be number one because they're the champs. Yeah, if you're king of the hill, you're king of the hill until you get knocked off. They the should hill. be number one. And I don't Cincinnati believe Buffalo should, should be, be number two. Number I, Cincinnati I will give you should that. be number two. I will give you after that. After that, I mean. 49ers shouldn't even be on the list. The Buccaneers should be number three. I would put the Chiefs at number three. Yeah, if, three or four, if, I would say. I, I, I put three. Buffalo would have to be four. Here's the reason why. Who, who you're right. Buffalo? Uh, you're, I agree. Yep. I'll, yeah, that's a good one. So you're hearing from Raider fan, and I'm telling you straight out, the Chiefs should be number three, not number seven. And I see that your Raiders are number 11. They should be above the Chargers for sure. And the Ravens. And the and Broncos. And the Broncos. And How Broncos. are the Broncos so high? And the 49ers. The, and the, the Packers. That, I'll even give you above those two teams. I mean, I the Packers, see the Packers because they've improved on defense. But but not on offense? No, they, they actually lost people on offense. Valdez yeah. Scandling went to Kansas City. Devontae went went to the Raiders. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not going to be real easy for Aaron Rodgers this year. This is where I would say your Raiders would be in the top five or six on this list. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, I'm just perplexed. The Broncos are as high as eight. Are you going to tell me Russell Wilson makes the difference on them? They were trash. Now, they're not going to be dumpster fire this year. Uh, And and we'll get to AFC West records in a minute. But no, they shouldn't be that high. And and the Chargers at number nine. Why, oh, why does the media have to push the Chargers down our throats? Every single year, it seems like the Chargers are the team to beat. The Chargers are the team to beat. By who? I'll tell you why. Because the Chargers always on paper look formidable and well, damn, they if that's always the case, they should be six-time champs now they always win games that they shouldn't by yeah. either a fluky field goal or a bad throw by the opposite team or something of that nature they always look good on paper but no they should not i'm with you i'm tired of them being forced down our throats yeah, I noticed you mentioned how they come away with those wins. But if you look at their losses, the Chargers always end up being the Chargers, and they do something stupid that get them a loss. Same with the Raiders. They do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I mean, but if you look, if, if I'm looking at this year only, the Raiders – are at least the second best team in the league or in the, in the, in the division. Yeah. At least. And I don't think the gap is that far between Kansas city and Oakland on paper right now, before anybody's played. I know you guys played the other night, but I watched like the first two seconds of it. And then I realized none of the starters were playing. Yeah. It's preseason. But yeah, this list is trash. So let's look at the AFC West. Um, if we did picks right now, 
I've got Kansas City at number one, Vegas at number two, the Chargers at number three, and the Broncos at number four. Record-wise, I got Kansas City winning 11 games. I got Vegas winning 10 games. I've got the Chargers winning 10 games, but because of a loss head-to-head with Vegas, that makes them the third-place team. And the Broncos only got them winning nine games. So is Oakland or is Vegas going to beat the Chargers twice? I don't think so. Because then their head to head. Because I think the Chargers cross won't each other revenge. out. Their head to head wouldn't matter. They cross each other out. Then strength of schedule. They have the same strength of schedule. They're in the same division playing the same people. Something's got to give if they're both 10 and six or 10 and seven. Yeah, I mean, it'll be, it'll be like their division record, you know, against yeah. Kansas City, Denver, and, you know, and then the likes. But yeah, I don't think it's going to be because, I mean, I, I agree. That's exactly, if I had to yeah. put them in that, in that list, that would be the order as well. But, and I don't have records. I can, I'm not going to give you records because I have to look at each schedule and I haven't done that. And we will do that closer to uh, time. I, I want to say by the time everybody's either had their second or third preseason game, like right before the season starts, that's the time. Because we haven't, even though Vegas has played their first preseason game, the starters didn't play. Just Josh Jacobson. He's the only one that played. Well, there that were team. a couple starters that played. And Jacobs got yanked after two series because they don't want to take a chance on getting him hurt. They just wanted to see what he was about. And he showed them. So I, I will say this, those, those uh, offensive linemen, they are making holes. That's, that's what they need to do, and they are protecting the quarterback. So I can see how McDaniels is influencing the offense. Not sold on the defense yet. So that being said, my fear is, and the reason why I think that we'll end up being 10 and 7 is because we're going to – put up points but we're going to give up points i don't think the chiefs are going to lose six games and and, and we'll we'll look at the uh we'll look at the um, schedule i don't think the raiders are going to lose seven games i hope you're right i really do I don't, I don't think they are so let me ask you this is it possible to have Three teams from the West get in the playoffs. Well, mathematically, yes, it, it is possible. Well, yeah, if you look at it mathematically, yeah, because you got seven teams that go in now because you have the two you wild got four cards. guaranteed, obviously, yeah. because they're the they're the division leaders. But looking at second tier talent. So if we did the what? So you're probably going to have Baltimore and Cincinnati. There's two. I'm going to say Kansas City and Oakland. There's four. Buffalo's five. New England is probably six, maybe. Yeah. And it's really going to depend on everybody else. You know, how, yeah, in the how East, well I'm going to say Indianapolis is coming out of that division. I don't know. Tennessee. It's going to be tough to beat. That's true. I keep forgetting about them. They're going to be tough to beat just because, and I don't trust Matt Ryan as far as I can throw him. So that is true. I forgot he's in Indy now. So anything can happen. Oh, yeah, most deaf. I mean, but I don't. Tennessee is also so one dimensional sometimes. I mean, theoretically, last year we should have had three AFC West teams in the playoffs. But we would have if we would have the tied. Chargers. The Chargers were stupid. Yeah, they had to do they had to do something dumb. So we're like, all right, we'll kick that field goal. Right. Um, because I mean it would have been smart just coaches, hey, let's just keep it a tie and we'll go to the playoffs. We'll play next week. No, I want to win. Yeah, well, that's what you get. Yep. How'd that work out for him? I you know, you said. You know, we agree on the top two. I'm going to go ahead and flip three and four. I think Denver's going to have a better record than, than San Diego. I think San Diego is going to be wow. the fourth team. I'm going to go Denver really? number three. Yeah. 
Hmm. That's interesting. That's that's one where I'm gonna have to, you know, see what these guys do during the preseason before I can say I just, yay or nay to that because anything's possible. I think but, the first year with Russell Wilson, they're gonna do things that nobody it's gonna take a little bit for the for the other teams to catch up to what they're doing. Now, once the league catches up with Denver, then you know, it is what it is. But I think they're going to – coming out the gate, they're going to have enough of a cushion that they're going to be – end up third in the, in the AFC. I West. thought about that, but I also realized that they have a rookie head coach. That uh, that could turn out to be pretty bad. Where did he come from? I forgot. I want to say he was on Minnesota staff. I'm not sure. Well, that might change my thinking a little bit because he's definitely going to get out coached by Andy and Josh. The verdict's I'm still out on Josh. Forge. Huh? The verdict's still out on Josh. Oh, I think I, I be, he will I want him to be the hell out of Denver just on principle because he was their head coach. He ain't going to yeah. lose to Denver. I, I want him to handle some things the way he did in New England but I don't want him to try to be Belichick Jr. I don't want him to try to do all that. I want him you could to lose be him. the team fast. I want him to be him. Yeah. Man. He's, he's and damn as a good Chiefs with- fan, as a Chiefs fan, I love it because the competition rises and it's just going to mean that the games are going to be that much more fun to watch. Yeah. And the hard tell you what, though. losses are going to be that much harder to take, so. The Chiefs can't afford to have one of those slumps at the beginning of the season. Sure they can. Sure they can. Everybody else is going to slump too. I w- it would be different if, like, Oakland was in a different division. Yeah. Then I would I would agree. But since we're in the same division, eh, we're all going to play the same play, same teams except for maybe two or three swap outs because of the records. But for yeah. the most part, we're playing the same teams. Now, real quick. Before we shut it down, do you know what division we play besides our own um, as far as our common opponents? Um, I'm not, I don't have, yeah, it's going to be schedule. it's going to be the uh, NFC West, the Cardinals, the Niners, the Seahawks, and whoever the other one is. Okay. And then I know our our extra game is against Tampa Bay. Yeah, they're not on our schedule, so that's good. No, it'd be, but it should be the same division. So you're going to play somebody besides Tampa Bay out of that division. Oh, that's fine. I'll I'll play Carolina or whoever. Yeah, it's going to be somebody like that. I can live with that. Okay. And then AFC wise, I'm not for sure on AFC because don't we go through two divisions? We go one NFC, one AFC. Yeah. I want to say it's the AFC East because I could swear Miami was on Vegas' schedule. I could be wrong. Uh, yeah, it's going to be the, 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 the Colts, the Jaguars, the Tennessee Titans, that division. Okay. All right, I can live with that. All right, look, we got less than 30 seconds left. So um, – Just want to remind everybody, in the coming weeks, we will have our full NFL breakdown. We got more stuff coming next week. Appreciate everybody. Show, thank you so much again. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Everybody stay positive, stay blessed. See you next time.